Dr. Rotom passed away in 2016. Four years had passed already. Now the name Rotom may remind the young generation Rotom's micro dissectors or textbook Rotom. Dr. Rotom is a great pioneer in the study of the microneurosurgical anatomy. He reported over 500 publications, including 160 original microneurosurgical articles on the brain anatomy. His textbook, Rotom, is a distillation of the 40 plus years anatomical study. It has been translated from the English in Portuguese, Chinese, and Japanese. It is widely considered to be Bible for neurosurgeons worldwide. He left the Rotom collection in WNS2. First, I'm going to introduce Dr. Rotom's biography until he moved to the University of Florida. Then I would like to talk on three subjects, his character and philosophy, his achievement and legacy. Dr. Rotom was born in 1932 in rural Harbin, Kentucky in a log cabin without electricity or plumbing. He often told us that the midwife who attended his bar did so in exchange for a bag of corn. These two pictures are early home and elementary school, which appear in the textbook Rotom. His mother was a teacher and his parents moved to Ohio for his education. But he had to sell papers on the street corner when he was 10 years old. His diligent and industrious personality must have been formed as a result of this hard scrabble upbringing. I'll show the video of his interview, which was made at the University of Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, I was born in uh, Parvin, Kentucky, uh, in the poor part of Appalachia in the hills, in a log cabin delivered by a midwife uh, in return for a bag of corn. Uh, there was no electricity. We carried water from the springs in, in the back of the house. I went to a two-room schoolhouse, uh, a dilapidated two-room schoolhouse uh, in the hills. And um, uh, I don't think I heard the word physician uh, uh, during my early life. There were no doctors in the hills. And uh, it wasn't until some years later that my parents moved out to Ohio uh, uh, and we became city dwellers. When he was an Ohio State University student, he watched the brain operation performed on an animal in the laboratory. He was amazed when he reached how a tiny region improved the animal behavior. He declared that the brain is the source of the mystery and wonder. Mind and brain are source of the happiness knowledge and wisdom. He wanted to work with the brain and to become a neurosurgeon. A few years later, he was attending Washington University Medical School. His training year was in early 1960. In those days, the brain surgery was primitive and risky. He wanted to treat his patient as well as he could. I prepared the movie, but uh, Dr. Kobayashi showed the oh, same movie, so I skip up. He became eager to establish a uh, roadmap to access the region. At the Mayo Clinic, Dr. Kobayashi of Shinshu University from Japan was a chief resident there around the same time. They published the paper Nervous Intermediate together in 1968 about 50 years ago. That was a dawn of the microsurgical anatomy. Dr. Otto told us that 
microsurgical anatomy is a roadmap for applying microsurgical technique. He thought that the combination of the knowledge of the microsurgical anatomy and the use of the operating microscope has improved the technical performance of the many neurosurgical procedures. He had a desire to build a program to create roadmap. He was offered an option of the moving to the University of Florida to develop a program from the ground up. He chose this known path as a way to begin a grow the training and educational environment he envisioned. He moved to the UF in 1972 and became the chief of the division of the neurosurgery in the department of surgery. Next, Dr. Roton's character and philosophy. Dr. Roton left many words which has remained in our mind. His character and philosophy can be gleaned in those words. They reveal his passion for micro neurosurgery and infinite love for humankind. The more accurate, gentle, and safe is a famous phrase, which expresses his thought on the most important of the microsurgery and microsurgical anatomy. Dr. Roton Fulton to use this slide. Dr. Roton often told us keep working hard. He was a hard working person. Dr. Day, who was the first UF neurosurgery resident and worked for a long time with Dr. Roton, described him a hard working, diligent, and patient individual. Dr. Roton did not play golf did not drink alcohol, and did not smoke. Dr. Otto also told us, we want perfect anatomical deception because we want perfect surgical operation. Dr. Martin, one of the Rotten Fellow, described that the work in lab was guided by the concept of the perfect Rotonian image. It demanded the right specimen, right dissection, and right picturing. The amazing he sensed when he saw animal operation in current led him to say, the brain is a crown jewel of the creation and the evolution. It was this passion for the brain that was the driving force behind his neuroanatomy research. Later years, in his lecture, he often told us a story that we need both right com surgeon is like compassion. The giant oak tree that sends its roots deep into the earth to the source of love and kindness from which we constantly replenish our ability to treat our patients with compassion and it makes us reach out with our limbs and branches to assist the world with skill and knowledge. Although his renown rested on the repetition as a researcher, Dr. Roton was also a devoted educator. He had been interested in teaching since his youth. During his uh, medical school, he was a very intelligent student who enjoyed teaching. In fact, he met his wife, Mrs. Joyce Roton, when he was asked to help the study of the fetal circulation by occupational therapy students. One of the major reasons he moved from famous Mayo Clinic to the University of Florida was to develop a center for training neurosurgeons in microsurgical technique. Next, Dr. Roton's achievement. They include first, the study of the microsurgical anatomy. He studied various areas of brain and published over 500 publications. Secondly, education with his research fellows. He worked with 
119 young doctors and educated them. Thirdly, he also contributed to the education of the countless number of the neurosurgeons globally through many dissection course, lectures, and publications. Fourthly, development of the microsurgical instrument. He developed many kinds of micro instruments for brain surgery. Lotton micro dissector is the most famous. After moving to US, Dr. Oton operated the Roton lab in 1975. He started the five-day microvascular and dissection course to train neurosurgeons. His anatomical research was also accelerated. He and his fellow established the research methods, such as arterial and venous injection methods. Dr. Evandro Oliveira and I worked together in 1981. Around that time, we started to inject the blue latex into the vein, removal of the arachnoid membrane, and taking the color slide. One of the most important elements in the Rotom Labs paper was the illustration. Four medical illustrators worked over the 41 years. The illustrators in the right upper corner are David Peets and Margaret Robin Berry. In the early years, the glossy print of the black and white photograph were retouched by medical illustrators to bring out important anatomical features. Dr. Roton published over the 500 publications, textbook Roton and Roton collection. In 2018, we reviewed the 160 original articles categorized them chronologically and published in general neurosurgery. The front cover of JNS issue shows the illustrations from articles from Rotom Labs. We separate the papers from Rotom Labs into five stages. The first stage in the latter half of the 1960s, Dr. Rotom started his anatomical study on using monkeys at Mayo Clinic, then using autopsy brain and temporal bone. He focused and reported the detailed anatomy of the cranial nerve with variation. He also started his anatomical study for the field of his major surgery, pituitary tumor surgery, aneurysm surgery, and microvascular decompression. One of the, his great work in the study of the facial nerve, on the facial nerve for acoustic tumor surgery. He found that the facial nerve was often stretched over the anterior half of the tumor capsule. He stated that this was because the facial nerve mostly caused in the anterior superior part of the internal auditory canal, and the tumor usually originated from the vestibular nerve causing in the posterior part of the canal. Let's look at uh, another field of the, his major surgery. The slide shows the figures of the Sarah Trushka for the pituitary tumor surgery. He demonstrated the easily understandable, beautiful color illustration figures of the pituitary gland to the cabinet sinus. He also studies the cerebral arteries with perforators for aneurysm surgery. The MVD is also one of Dr. Roton's major surgeries. After Janet's report on the MVD, Dr. Roton studies the three cerebral arteries, especially their relationship to the cranial nerve in the CP angle. Then he proposed rule of three in the CP angle. When the SCA compresses the trigeminal nerve, trigeminal neuralia develop, and the AICA does the facial nerve, and facial spasm develop, and PICA does the gross pharyngeal nerve, gross pharyngeal neurology develop. When Dr. Roton and I studied the fourth ventricle and the veins of posterior fossa, Dr. Roton proposed a rule of three in the posterior fossa. In the second stage, mainly in 1980, Dr. Roton extended his study to 
other areas for the basic anatomy for general neurosurgery. The topics include the ventricle and venous system, etc. Regarding the ventricle, he collected all anatomical information, including the neural structure described by the anatomist and the related vessel described by the radiologist and compose a single structure from them for neurosurgeon. In the third stage, mainly in 1990s, Dr. Otto again studied the cabinet sinus, temporal bone, jugular foramen, and etc. Because there were some new development in scurvy surgery, such as Durant's approach. In the fourth stage, since early 2000s, Dr. Otto began to study internal structure of the brain using fiber dissection techniques. Several studies were reported using the combination of the fiber dissection and diffusion tensile image. Treatment method had become increasingly diverse. In the fifth stage, several labs projects that dealt with new methods, such as the endoscope, neural navigation system, and the vascular surgery and deep brain stimulation. Dr. Rotom compiled their effort over the 35 years of anatomical research into a single textbook, Rotom. This textbook has been translated in Portuguese, Chinese, and Japanese. In Rotom's lab, a tremendous volume of the descriptive photogram of the dissection one produced. He considered how this data could best be handed down. He started to work on Rotom correction in 2010. He discussed with Dr. Robertson and Dr. Sorensen. As a result, Rotom correction website was made. Next, let me talk about the Dr. Rotom's contribution to the neurosurgeon education. He made a significant contribution to it. Dr. Rotom hosted and organized numerous dissection courses. One type was a five-day microvascular and dissection course held in his lab at the UF. And the other type was a cadaver dissection course held at the WNS, CNS, and North American Scar Base meetings. The most left slide shows a monthly five-day microvascular and dissection course in all Rotom lab. Every month, the five-day course was held for more than 10 years. Over the year, more than 1,000 neurosurgeons from all over the world attended from the course. The course made the Rotom Lab in U.S. famous in the world. He performed the anatomical study with 119 young neurosurgeons research fellows for about 40 years. About 100 of the fellows were from outside the USA. He so told them not only the surgical anatomy, but also his passion for the microsurgery and his philosophy. It was Dr. Rotom's hope that his foreign research fellow would return to their own country and teach others and share the knowledge there. The picture was taken at the celebration of the Dr. Rotom's 40 years at the UF, which was held in 2012. At that time, he was pleased to learn that about 40 of the 100 foreign fellows had become professor. Rotom Lab at the UF served as a microsurgical training center for many neurosurgeons from all over the world. His research fellow has established similar laboratory all over the world, inheriting Dr. Rotom lab system and his spirit. Japanese fellows started the Japanese microsurgical anatomy seminar in 1986, 35 years ago. The first one was held at Kyushu University of Fukuoka, Japan. Evandro joined the Japanese fellows far from Brazil. This seminar has been held annually, and this year, the 34th 
seminar will be held. The seminar was very popular, especially in 1990s in Japan, and more than a few thousand of the proceedings were sold every year over 10 years. The first international symposium on the microsurgical anatomy was held in Matsumoto Shinshu, Japan in 2002. You can see Dr. Roton, Evandro, Arudinar, and Dr. Wen. Receiving the support from the Japanese Society for Microsurgical Anatomy and Dr. Kobayashi, the president of the Japanese Neurosurgical Society in 2002, I organized and held the first international symposium when Dr. Roton was invited to an annual meeting of Japanese Neurosurgical Society. After that, three research fellows, Evandro, Arunia, and I decided to continue the international one. The three were research fellows at the same time in 1981. Evandro, are you hearing me? We are grew up under Dr. Roton, and we are working together for 40 years. After that, we organized and held five more international symposium, four times in Turkey and one time in Brazil. These are photos of the first Roton Society meeting which is also the seventh international symposium on the microsurgical anatomy. I would like to explain the relations between the two meetings. The international symposium was carried out by three 1981 Roton fellows, Evandro, Arudina, and myself. Professor Roton passed away in 2016 and the WNS 2016 Dr. Joan Fernandez Miranda, the president of this meeting, proposed the establishment of the Roton Society for continuing education of the surgical anatomy. Then the first Roton Society meeting was held in Tianjin, China by Dr. Tong. The second meeting is a virtual meeting due to the coronavirus infection, but Thanks to it, the lecture was sent out all over the world. The Roton Society meeting will continue to be carried out by Roton Fellows. Right upper corner picture was taken a month before Dr. Roton's death in January 2016. He told me about next few years plan enthusiastically. He left us the word, there is no finish line. Dr. Roton, thank you very much for teaching us. We will never forget you and what you did. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>